I'm Aid Emsley and this is Morgan Nichols. Remember that gig at the garage when you turned up uh, and me and Des were set either side of the stage, four for twelve, head oh, yeah. each, yeah. and then you turned up and there was so much gear that I, we had to move <laughs> over to the same side of the stage as each other. Right. Uh, and then you had that side. Was uh, that Persuaders gig? Yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. You had some ridiculous setup. It was like, uh, I think there was a 4 by 12 the Jubilee, there was like, it was a load of gear yeah. that night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was all the, it was all the um, stuff that was sort of, well, it's from the senseless things back, um, back in the early, uh, well, early 90s to late 80s. I sort of kind of, after toying around with all sorts of, you know, piling one thing after another, and, and at the end of the day, all I was trying to achieve was the Live at Leeds bass sound. And uh, when I was about 10 years old, I used to go around to my auntie's house and, um, and she only had a few records, but Live at Leeds was one of them and, um, and uh, on vinyl. And it was a good package for a, for a kid back then because it, it had all the gig shots and, you know, it was, quite, it was just a good, a nice, lovely piece, you know. And, um, but yeah, Live at, um, Live at Leeds, my generation and that bass sound, Summertime Blues. And um, so it was trying to replicate that. And uh, it took me a while, and then I, I realised that actually what he was doing, he was biamping. So it was uh, the bottom end was just the bottom end. Do you remember what year it was? It would have been seven, 70 something, early, very early, very early 70. I think so, actually. Was I, it you a, know what? Um, I'm saying that, but I might be wrong, but was um, it I should know. Acoustics he was using, acoustic bass amps. It could have been, yeah. And then Suns for the top end. It could have been, yeah. But it was, it was, uh, there was definitely biamping involved. And, uh, and, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he took it. From there, all the way through, he got more and more advanced. But, but the, the, his, the concept of uh, John's um, sound was 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 biamping. So what I ended up with was um, was uh, I think it was um, I started off with an Ampeg SVT going into an eight by ten standard, but laying it on its side, and then a fifty watt Marshall st uh, stack on top, and then ended up with a Marshall DBS system, I think, and um, for the bottom end. But the top end always stayed the same, which was a 50 watt Jubilee yeah. and a volume pedal in between the two, splitting the signal. So the dry or the tuner out, I think it probably was back then, going into the SVT or the Marshall um, and the 8x10. And then the top end, the swell, bringing in the, the 50 watt Marshall. And that, and that was basically it. And it was, it was quite a simple, I think I had a compressor in the, across at some point over the top, but it really, that was it. And so the bass butler is just exactly that, I think. Um, and that after the conversation we had in a pub many moons ago, it seems now, um, is ba yeah, that's it. It's, uh, it's, it's that, that whole rig in, in one tiny little box, which is pretty amazing, really. And uh, kind of like the dream, you know, in, you know, in reality. And, uh, and here it is. So you've got a bass channel which is, you've got compression which doubles up as input gain, you've got bass, treble and then volume for the bass channel. That's always in and when that's lit blue the top's muted, when you, it's lit green the top's in. The top is a guitar uh, gain structure basically, a full guitar amp gain structure done with single ended J frets. So you've got your gain, your bass, your middle, your treble, like a guitar tone stack on there. Then you've got your volume power this end, you've got your ground lift switch above it. This is 18 volts centre positive, and you've got a clean XLR out, which is this channel. There's a bass cab sim on there. You've got 
the dirty XLR out, which is this channel, there's a guitar cab sim on there. You've got the amp out, which is a mixture of the two, blended, depending on these volumes. And that doesn't have cabs in. And then you've got the expression pedal. Is it worth, um, that, well, no, we were talking about it earlier, but the, the, the as I was saying about giving it a bit of a boost, an extra boost, if you, you know, <laughs> if you really want it. But there's a, there's a little trick that you could do with the expression pedal. Yeah. If you haven't actually, I haven't actually tried this yet, but in, in theory. It does work. We tried it back at the ranch with a fuzz. Right. Uh, if you use an insert cable into this expression jack, you can put something like a compressor or if you want to add compression to the top end as well because at the moment yeah. it's just the bottom channel yeah. that's got compression sure yeah uh if you want to add extra effects in front of this channel just the top end just the top end channel yeah. you can use the expression jack with an insert cable yeah and then insert that effect yeah, I'm going to do that pretty much as soon as I get home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does work. We tried it yeah. with a fuzz. Yeah. So it would definitely work with a compressor. Yeah, yeah I think it's, well, I, I think because I think some people will, will, yeah, will be interested in that side of it. They want to go a bit deeper into, the, yeah, into what, what, you, what can be had out of it. Yeah, um, you're going to get some people that might want to put a chorus or something in there on the top, which I don't agree with because it, well, uh, it's, for me, fuzz, great. Yeah. Distortion's nice. Chorus, yeah. unacceptable. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's just unacceptable. Yeah. Uh, but people phaser, like it. Phaser, maybe. Some people <laughs> like it. Yeah, maybe a phaser. Well, you can put other stuff in there just using uh, an insert. Yeah. So you'd have a TRS jack going to two mono jacks. Sure. One of those yeah, tables. Yeah. Yeah. It gets you in, because you've got an input buffer that's global to this. Uh, but and you can still have and the volume. But you can still have the volume pedal doing what it's doing. Obviously, in in line with it. You'd have to. Or would it be just one or the other? You, there right. probably is a way of rigging them both up. Right. It depends on your cabling. Let's let someone else worry about that. Because normally you'd have a TRS. Uh, so the expression pedal is a TRS jack. The right. lead, a cable. Yeah. It's a stereo, quarter inch jack cable going to an expression pedal and it's putting a 10k pot in on a volume rocker right like and that's a standard thing there's a load of people make that you know yeah whereas if you want to insert another effect into the front of this you'd have to use an insert cable which yeah. would be a trs to two mono jacks one of those cables and then you can you can send and return you're only affecting this channel by putting something in here so it would be replacing the volume pedal that you yeah you're, you're talking yeah. about there, you know, so, because it's, I guess, if you back the volume pedal back, yeah, the guitar amp cleans right up. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Which is, you know, so I wanted this to do the same thing, so. Yeah, because in, in, in a live situation, I mean, tempting is it is to have it full on all the time. <laughs> uh, there are, there, there's the occasional time when you don't want it all the way up. And, um, yeah, and so it sort of kind of works. Um, for live, uh, and it, well, it, it just works, you know. Um, so it's quite, it's quite a simple concept, really. But but to get it all in a box is, is a whole nother yeah, thing. So there's, so there's, um, <laughs> so, yeah, so there's um, on the XLRs out. It's cab sims, isn't it? That's so, right. Just so on the XLRs. Just on the, but not on the amp out. Yeah. So there's just a, a blend base, of the two. Yeah. There's a bass cab sim on on this channel, and a guitar cab sim on this channel, and then the amp out is a mix pre cab sim so yeah. there's no cab sim on the amp because you don't need it uh so you'd you'd send that to whatever amps on the stage there uh and then the monitor guy would take two feeds there and uh that goes through the pa with the cab sims on yeah you know, so uh it's good because it's more repeatable because it, you know there's less variables doing it that way Mm. Because you haven't got to get the mic in the right. Place. Yeah, well, that was the old, that was the, always the thing. It did vary quite a bit, and and actually, when you when you pull down the um, uh, the volume or go into the amp, you still get the, the mic still on. Yeah. So you're still yeah, getting yeah. all this all this other stuff, a lot of a lot of rubbish that you don't really want. So yeah. doing it this way is a lot is a lot cleaner. Yeah, um, yeah, but we're yeah. still all the gain. So it's um, yeah. and I noticed that. Um, 
uh, while I've been demoing it, um, going into the board, it, it, that it, well, it just works so much better. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And it's the, and like I say, it's the same every time. So very handy for recording with from yeah. these XLRs. Yeah, perfect. You can just go straight yeah. into your DAW, yeah. you know, into your interface, balanced out straight in, and on the two tracks, assign two tracks, and have the bottom yeah. in there, the top in there. Yeah, and then you you know, even if you don't want to use it, it's there if you want it. You can bring it in in the mix. Yeah. Or if the mix engineer decides he wants a bit of filth added, yeah, it's already there. Yeah, you've already given it to him. So there's an endless possibilities yeah. with it, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wanted to make it simple though, so people could understand it and yeah, have. I, a whereas laugh. I wanted to make it as complicated as possible, <laughs> so no one else could have it. <laughs> <laughs> This is the little bass thing, that's really light as well. We're coming out the amp out into the effects return on this, and then you've got a ground uh, lift, which it's lifted at the minute because we've got the two XLRs going to the interface. Sure, yeah. And then the amp out going to the amp. And that means the amp is grounding this. So you don't want it grounded twice. You don't want it grounded from the PA and the amp. So this is what this lift switch is doing, and you can just hear it from the speaker. If I ground this, you'll hear a hum come in. Hear that? And if I lift it, it disappears. So we're grounding this from the amp, and we're lifting pin one on both of these XLRs. Right. So they're grounded at the PA end, and then this is grounded then by the amp the amp out into the effects return so it, it eliminates any ground loops right so if it's up it's lifted if it's down it's grounded whereas if you're just going into a DAW on its own and you're using it to record yeah. you probably want that that grounded yeah that makes sense and um, so the way that we've got it now the um, we're not hearing any of the amp uh, Filters or EQ. Or no, just this control. It's just, it's just simply it's the volume. volume. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, after the effects return, there. Which does make sense. Yeah. Uh, so you're going in as flat as you can, really, yeah. from this, uh, with no cabs in on this, because you've got the cabs. But we're taking feeds for the audio. I think you've got, you've got mic on there. We get three feeds, and then you've got the two XLRs. These cabinets. Uh, it became apparent that base. That there was a market for bass players wanting lightweight cabinets and stuff, you know. So these are like 15 mil ply. It's a Lavocci neodymium 12 inch bass speaker in each. And uh, it says on the magnet 600 watts, I'm putting it at 400 so people don't blow them up. Uh, <coughs> and so uh, I'm going to try in a minute. He's going to try in a minute. Uh, and these are rear ported just in this corner here. And they're super lightweight. You can pick them up with one hand. Uh, it, they're great for like doing little, if you're doing like a, a small club or a pub and you just want to jump in an Uber uh, or bolt, there you go. get a bolt to the gig. Uh, and it just kind of makes it easy. Uh, the main thing is that it sounds fucking great, and that's all that really anyone should care about. At the end of the day, I mean, it just sounds exactly like the, the real thing, you know?